What's up, hustlers? Check in, check in. It's your boy JT Hustles back in with another video. As you guys can tell by the title of this video, what we're going to be talking about, and it's regarding to becoming a bulletproof entrepreneur. A bulletproof entrepreneur. I'm going to elaborate on what I mean when I say a bulletproof entrepreneur here in a second. But as always, we're going to wait a second for YouTube to send out post notifications in case anybody want to tune into this live. It's a kind of early live stream, so I'm not expecting a lot of people to get here. But for those who do want to check it out, um, you know, be sure to interact in the top chat. But without further ado, let's get started. Yo, yo, shout out to JT Hustles for teaching people how to become entrepreneurs on YouTube and all over social media. Continue the good work, my brother, JT Hustles. <laughs> I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. What's up, hustlers? This is your boy JTS. You already know who it is. Before we get started, though, shout out to Sear Culture. Uh, it's a company out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, that sent me the shirt. Appreciate them. Go support their brand. Uh, as always, uh, want to show appreciation to anybody that reaches out uh, and sends your boy anything. But what I want to talk to you about in this video is about becoming a pull a bulletproof entrepreneur on this channel you guys know we do a lot of talking about uh start this business make a hundred dollars a day five hundred dollars a day thousand dollars a day six figure business this six figures business that uh and i was really examining the videos that i have uh over 600 as of this upload talking about different ways to motivate educate and inspire you to do something entrepreneurial and i feel like i kind of have never addressed uh, a series of things that i want to go back and kind of address and one of which is i tell you about how you can make money reselling online with your independent courier service doing this doing that however we don't talk about how can you keep that money right so it, it makes no difference how much money you make if you lose it all so if you make a hundred thousand dollars and you lose a hundred thousand dollars right then you back at square one so i want to talk to you guys about asset protection uh i don't think that it is discussed enough in our community when i say our if this is the very first live stream you ever seen uh i'm not talking about this being a, a, a black channel or anything like that when i say terms such as we and our i'm talking about anybody that comes from a low income environment right whether you male female regardless of what you look like uh that's my background and i make content for those type of people so regardless of where you are if you're trying to improve your financial situation uh you come from a low income environment and you're just trying to do better for your yourself and for future generations that's what i'm talking about appreciate all 32 people that's watching this live hit that thumbs up button comment where you're watching this from so now that you know what i'm talking about as it relates to asset protection i want you guys to also know many of you notice i'm not an attorney i'm not trying to give you legal advice or anything like that uh if anything i just want you to start thinking about this and this is a conversation that you should have with your trusted attorney so don't take any of this and say okay jt told me to do this so i'm going to do this right i'm going to give you some information i want you to fact check me do your due diligence make sure i'm not telling you anything wrong and then take it to your attorney and then talk to them and your family whoever else is involved in your business structure uh uh, and you guys develop a plan of attack to have asset protection. So if you start a six figure business, how can you protect that asset from if somebody wants to sue you? We're not going to talk about the tax side of it in this video. Hopefully I can get my CPA to come and do a video with me or I might just go meet with him and get the answer to some questions and do a future video on that. So we're not talking about asset protection in this particular video as it relates to tax liability. We're talking about if somebody ever wants to try to take uh, all are part of your business that you built, you put time into, you put money into, and now you don't know what to do. So um, lots of times people reach out to me saying, JT, I want to start a courier service since that is my uh, entrepreneurial foundation. And from that, they want to know, can I start without having an LLC? 
do I have to put the van or the truck um, in my LLC's name, right? And I always tell them yes, uh, but I also preface it by saying that it's not yes because the company won't give you the opportunity if you don't have a business structure. Many companies will, but I'm telling you yes, do it because it protects you, right? It protects you. But let's go a little bit deeper than that because you probably heard me say it and many other people say it on the internet. What do we mean when we say uh, it protects you? And is it as simple as you go file with your state that you're in, you go get an EIN number, and now nobody can ever uh, touch any of your assets as long as you say, I personally don't own them, my business owns them, right? So uh, now I'm talking about piercing the corporate veil, right? So first and foremost, top of the list, you need to have some business structure uh, you guys know I like LLCs, but I'm actually going to start meeting with my accountants and attorneys to talk about for what my goal is. Should I go more S core? Should I go more corporation? Right. So I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, do your research and find out what makes the most sense for whatever you're trying to accomplish. Right. Uh, so up until this point, I've been all LLCs. But as long as you have some business structure, that is important. Now let's talk about how you should properly set that up. Again, I'm not an attorney. This is just for you to have a further discussion with your attorney or whoever uh, it is that gives you trusted advice. So when it comes to setting up a business entity, you must treat it differently than you treat your personal assets or they can do what's called piercing the corporate veil, right? Piercing the corporate veil. Um, so couple notes that I have here on it is that when they try to pierce your corporate veil uh, and it's different based off a of state, right? So if you go to certain states, they're more pro uh, setting up business entities like the Delawares, the Wyomings, the Nevadas, things of that nature. But you should definitely do the research in your state and in these other states if you want to set up an entity somewhere else. But the federal law is what it is, but understand that your state law can be different, right? So one thing that um, a person, an individual, or a business will do when they're trying to pierce your corporate veil, and this is important because this is how you keep your money when somebody try to come after you for whatever reason, is they want to see or establish whether or not it is a legitimate business or it's your alter ego, right? And we're going to talk about more about what would constitute a business being recognized in the court system as an alter ego and then they therefore pierce your corporate veil and now you're personally liable for whatever it is they're trying to get out of you right uh next two things i'm gonna go through a little bit quicker because we're gonna spend the most time on the alter ego part of it and that is uh if justice requires it right uh if your business seems that it's only structured to avoid you doing legitimate work with people, right? And if equity requires it, right? So those are, again, a couple of the ways, not saying it's all the ways you have to do the research in your state, right? So uh, if somebody wants to pierce your corporate veil or bring a, a charging order uh, up against you, some of the things that they will have to do is... Uh, see if you're operating legitly, right? So now we're talking about the alter ego. So appreciate all 37 people that's watching. Hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from. If you're just now tuning in, uh, I have some notes here that I was taking. And the whole value that I want you to get out of this is that this channel is all about entrepreneurship, whether you want to do a side business or just become a full-time entrepreneur. And I try to make content to educate, inspire, and motivate you to do so. But uh, I think it's important that we also have the discussion of, okay, yeah, I know how to make the money, but how do I keep more of that money? Now, again, as far as the tax perspective goes, that's a future video. I'm talking about if you make a six-figure business or you make whatever and somebody comes after you, uh, how can you have uh, assurance that your business is going to protect you, right? So when they go to piercing the corporate veil, one of the main ways that they're going to try to pierce that corporate veil and make you personally liable for whatever it is that they're going uh at you for is they want to establish is this an alter ego so is this a legitimate business or is this your alter ego so is your business being operated 
legitly, right? You got a business uh, entity. There's formalities in place, things of that nature. Next, are you co-mingling funds? Co-mingling funds, meaning that um, are you using company funds for non-company purposes? Or if you have multiple businesses, a parent company and a subsidiary, are you mixing all the money together, right? Are you co-mingling of the funds or the assets, right? Are you keeping adequate records, right? And again, all of this stuff matters if you know you ever are in this situation. So, of course, if you never get sued, then you might not ever need to have to worry about showing all of this stuff. But I am a firm believer in preparing for war in times of peace. So, by establishing your business a legitimate way, Keeping these records is not very hard to do. It's just a little bit more work than doing absolutely nothing like some people that establish LLCs do. But just by doing this, you insulate yourself and you can protect some of your assets, some of your funds if there ever was a situation, whether it's fraudulent or not. Right. Because believe it or not, throughout history, people have brought up fraudulent claims in one Right. And if you're not able to protect yourself and prove that it's a fraudulent claim, then you can lose your assets. Right. So the commingling the funds, are you keeping adequate records? Right. Whether it's your expenses, your revenue coming in, just adequate records, the nature of your business. Right. Is it a legitimate nature of your business? Uh, do, is there any shady components about it? Right. Uh, is the company undercapitalized? I'm going to pause on this point. For a minute because I know a lot of people who they take my advice and and again I'm telling you you don't have to just do it just because JT also says do it I'm telling you that you should definitely do your due diligence fact check the stuff that I'm saying find out if it's true or not and then go to a legal professional an attorney and then run it past them as well and then you make a decision and do that for my information as well as anybody else's information you come across whether it's online or uh, in person I just want you to start thinking about it more because if all you're doing is thinking about how can I make money and you never focus on how do I protect this money right then you got to always try to figure out how can I make more money Right. So now your pocket has a hole in it. And instead of you patching up that hole and say, OK, this is how I could keep as much money as possible legally. Right now, you got to worry about, OK, I need to make more money at all times because I can't stop the bleeding over here. So we're addressing how what can we do to proactively address what's going on over here structure our business it's more to it than just saying i got my articles i got my articles of organization i got my ein number so now i'm going to say everything is controlled by jt Hustles llc and no matter what i do nobody can ever take any of that right so uh the big point is your company undercapitalized this means that you set up a business and you keep as little money as possible in that business so it is no way that a reasonable person aka a judge or whoever can look at uh how much money you maintain in your business and believe that that is enough money to run this business effectively right so if every time you get a check for let's just for easy math you get a hundred dollars you immediately move $95 away and you keep a little bit of money, the lowest amount possible here in your company. But your company is supposed to be a construction company or a, a e-commerce company. And they know you got to buy inventory and pay for marketing and all of this stuff. And it's just no way that you can realistically run this company with this small amount of money so that's going to be a red flag and say okay this company is undercapitalized how can you expect a reasonable person to believe that you're running this legitimate business with a shoestring budget right so how are you affording to do all of this stuff that your business is uh apparently doing Right. Buying equipment, paying workers, uh, doing marketing, whatever your business does. Right. Uh, and again, it just really just depends on the lawyer that you're fighting against in the situation. But the biggest takeaway is, is your company undercapitalized, meaning that you don't keep any money over there with the business for uh, if the time ever comes, you had to show that uh, and it doesn't make sense. Right. A few more things. 
Is your company just a shell, meaning that you make a lot of money, you create a business entity, the business doesn't do any business at all, you just throw your money over there into the company to try to insulate yourself from uh, any liabilities or protect yourself, right? Now, there are nuances, and again, you could talk to uh, your legal professional, your tax professional about uh, doing holding companies and things of that nature, but what I'm talking about here is when somebody is intentionally trying to get over and you find yourself in trouble and it gets out that, okay, this company wasn't really doing any business-related stuff. It was just a shell company um, that somebody created just to hide assets in or hide money in, right? You have no corporate formalities, meaning that you don't have any bylaws, you're not keeping minutes, and you have no operating agreement, right? And this is true whether you have a single member LLC all the way up through a, a S Corp, a corporation, right? You need to have, now you might not necessarily have all of these, really just depends on the nature of your business, but you need to have uh, bylaws, are you recording your minutes, do you have an operating agreement, right? That's saying that this is what this business does. Now you can change your operating agreement and things as it makes sense for your business. But if you're operating without any of these things, then it could be a red flag. And I'm not saying that uh, any one of these things alone may be enough for them to pierce your corporate veil. I'm just saying if you don't have these things and you're ever in that situation, it's a bad look, right? So, and then you really at the mercy of the judge or whoever is making a decision, is this a legitimate business? So should only the business be liable or should that man or woman that owns that business, should all of their personal assets be liable in this situation? So uh, you have no corporate formalities and are you using company funds for non-company use? Right. So, again, these are not every possible way that your corporate veil can be pierced. However, what I want you to take away from this is that you should have some business entity for whatever business you're doing. I know lots of times people say, you know, just for whatever reason, they don't want to establish a business entity. It could be the financing uh, cost with it. Uh, like I'm going to do a video here soon of just documenting how to open up a business bank account. It's not very hard to do, but I, I feel like maybe some people just don't know how to do that. So for whatever reason, people just don't want to go through the formal process of setting up a legal entity. If you want to protect yourself, then you need to have some sort of business entity in place, right? And then deeper than that, the, the things that have been mentioned in this video up until this point are certain things that your business should do if you want the protection, if you really want that limited liability, then you need to treat your business like a business. If you don't treat your business like a business, I don't care if you go 20 years just doing whatever it is you want to do with your business, not really treating it like a business, co-mingling funds and keeping it undercapitalized and having no formal structure or, or anything like that. And then you're sued 20 years later, right? and you have none of this stuff, it's a good chance that they're going to try to pierce your corporate veil and make you personally liable. So uh, if you want to be bulletproof as an entrepreneur, and this should be a goal of any entrepreneur, right? The whole point in setting up these entities is so we can operate legally, right? You know, the brand, the name is JT Hustles, but we're talking about legal hustling. There's enough ways to make money legally that we don't have to come in through the back door no more or try to how to sneak and do this on the low, right? The, the system, at least in the United States, I can't speak for every country, but the system in the United States, and many entrepreneurs will tell you this, is that it's really in favor of the business owner more than it's in favor of the traditional nine to five worker, right? When it comes to the tax laws and the, the benefits that they have as far as like what my business can do and versus if I was an employee, what I could do as an individual, right? So things of that nature, the insulation that it provides, uh, professionally speaking. So it's really in favor of you as an entrepreneur. So you don't got to do no backdoor stuff. You can do legal business. And this is just some of the things I want you to consider. So if you have an LLC right now, you can rewatch this video, ask yourself, do I have these things again, just to be uh, real brief with them. So if I tried to sue you 
whatever your business is, and I wanted my attorney to try to pierce your corporate veil, what commonly occurs or what commonly is targeted. I'm not going to say it commonly occurs, but uh, the first thing that I'm going to want my attorney to do is uh, say, okay, is this their alter ego or is this a legitimate business, right? Uh, maybe we can get away with just saying, this is not a legit business, this is an alter ego, pierce their corporate veil, now they're personally liable for all of your assets, your home and whatever else you have, uh, personal bank accounts. So uh, in order to do that, some of the things that my attorney would my, uh, would probably target is, is your business being operated legitly? Are you co-mingling funds? Are you keeping adequate records? What is the nature of your business? Is your company undercapitalized, meaning underfunded, right? Is your company just a shell? Is it doing any real business at all, right? Are there any corporate formalities? Do they have an operating agreement? Do they have bylaws? Do they have any minutes, right? And are they using their funds for non-company use, Right. And again, we're not talking about the tax uh, code and things of that nature. Uh, we, we might talk about that in a future video. We're just talking about how you can protect yourself as an entrepreneur in case somebody wanted to come and try to take what you worked hard for. Right. You're the man or woman who spent the time and energy in establishing your business, making money for said business. And I don't want you to have that taken away from you. Uh, in entirety or in part just because you just didn't know. So I think that this is something that uh, the the highest class of people may know about and, and they use it on a regular basis. But like I said, uh, for us, people that may have come from a low income environment and now we're doing better or trying to do better, we may not have even heard of asset protection and things that people do to insulate their personal liability if somebody was to target them, right? So if you were to try to sue Walmart, uh, is the individual, is the Walton family worried about their personal assets, right? So I'm going to run through the chat. Again, do your due diligence on all of this information, you guys. Want to emphasize that. Share this with anybody you think it can help. And this is anybody that has a business or is thinking about starting a business. If you already have your business, you can come up with an operating agreement today, right? If you want to, right? If you got a, uh, if you don't have an EIN number, stop using your personal social security number. Go get an EIN number. It's free on IRS.gov. Now, to register to get your articles of organization, that will cost something. It really just depends on your state. I know uh, in my state is $140, $145.50. Like I literally just paid for one. So $145.50, but it varies depending on your state. But that is a small price to pay to say that this is part of me building, uh, building out a bulletproof infrastructure. And this is not because I intend on taking advantage of people in any of my businesses, either now or the ones that I start in the future, but it's just to protect myself. So even if you are a legitimate business owner, which I hope all of you are either legitimate or aspiring to be legitimate because you don't have a business yet, uh, business owners, right? You still do this just to protect yourself. So this is not saying do this so you can get over on people, but this is how you protect yourself this is just a smart way to do business right um just ordered your book on independent couriers appreciate that shout out to dc shout out to charlotte right first to like appreciate that man appreciate that and again if you guys got any questions and i can answer them that's why i do these live streams if it's outside of my scope of of knowledge i'll, I'll be the first one to tell you i don't know everything but just some basic stuff is what i wanted to present to you here in this video you take this Fact check me, take it to your attorney, say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. What do I need to do or what can I do to protect myself if and when this was to happen? And the best time to do it, the best time to prepare for war is during times of peace, right? So now when there's nothing going on, nobody even knows what your business uh, is, right? It's just a thought in your head. You ain't even made an Instagram page for it yet. Now is the time to think about, okay, yes, this is what my business is going to be. This is how I'm going to market. This is who I'm going to service. All of that stuff that you normally think about when it comes to building a big business and making money off of it. But also, we need to think about asset protection. What can we do to keep 
the government in the form of taxes away from stealing all of our assets, which again, that'll be in future videos. But let's start off with talking about how do we keep other people from piercing our corporate veil. Now, that doesn't mean that they might not get nothing, but they, they don't get everything that we have or they don't get too much uh, to for it to be considered reasonable for the situation. Because believe it or not, there are people out here that are professionals at just suing people and making money. Right. Maybe, you know, somebody like that in your family. We all have heard of them. But it's some people that, you know, you will think that that's their full time job. Right. They just sue people for stuff and get money. What's up, JT and Hustlers in the chat? San Juan, Puerto Rico in the house today on vacay. Normally from Cincinnati, man. Appreciate your time for watching me on your vacation. Shout out to Houston, North Carolina in the building as always. Appreciate that. Shout out to California in here. Detroit, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Right, uh, place corporate funds in a personal bank account, commingling funds. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, I'm not saying that you can't pay yourself a dividend, a distribution, a management fee. Like your business can and should compensate you in some form. You decide what that compensation is based off of what makes sense for your situation. But I'm saying if you're just commingling of the funds to the extent of okay, I'm just this money comes in. I say it's for this business and I spend all of this money on personal stuff, right? Or I do whatever I want, right? So if you want to, like, again, for easy math, let's say your business makes $100 today. If you want to pay yourself uh, $20 a day out of that as a distribution or a dividend payment or whatever, right? A management fee, right? So you, you pay yourself that. And then now you take that $20 and buy something that's cool. Now, that $20 is going to be, you know, something that you're going to account for on your taxes and things like that. But that's different from just straight up from the business bank account to me taking all of the beautiful women that I meet on vacation. Like that is co-mingling of the funds. That's using company funds for non-company use. That's the kind of stuff that gets you in trouble, right? So, but if you're going to pay yourself a dividend payment, a distribution payment, a paycheck, whatever it is, right? Um, a management fee, and then you use your paycheck to buy all of that stuff. That's not what they're talking about. But yeah, definitely, if you commingle the funds, you're gonna run into an issue, right? All right, for self-publishing, do you advise to get an LLC, right? Um. I, I think that it's not a bad idea to have an LLC for any business that you're trying to do. Now, um, for me personally, I like the, if, if done properly, right, I like the, the tax benefits and the asset protection that I get from an LLC. Now, there are a lot of self-publishing authors that don't do LLCs, and I guess they're saying that the liability may be low. Now, if you're writing a book, telling people to do certain things and then they do that and they get hurt or killed or something like that, right? And then you think that it's possible for you to get sued and be liable for that, right? If you self-publish it without an LLC, then hey, you know, you run into that, uh, which is why I publish all of my books under the JT Hustles brand, right? So the JT Hustles, Baby Hustles brand um, as well. So me personally, in my personal opinion, I think every business should have an LLC. Now, uh, it doesn't have to be just for your books. Uh, you could be a media company. So uh, if you're a media company, maybe your podcast is there, your YouTube channel is there, your books are there, whatever else makes sense as it relates to being a media company, right? So uh, things of that nature. But that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion on the matter. Right. Yeah. Appreciate all 62 people that's watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. For the benefit of those people who have just checked in, you guys know I'm super repetitive in these videos, but uh, I think repetition is the father of learning. So the more I say it, maybe the more people will get it or to make more sense, the more uh, I say it. But you guys already know that if you've been rocking with me. We're talking about how to become a bulletproof entrepreneur by not only learning, but you got to apply this asset protection as the title states. Because you guys already know how I feel about knowledge is power. I don't think knowledge is power. I think the application of knowledge is power. That's why I'm telling you don't just take this information and do nothing with it take this information do your own due diligence say is jt telling me the truth or is he lying to me if you find out that i am telling you the truth then you go to a professional an attorney and say okay this is what i'm trying to do you tell me uh what i should do to protect myself reason why you still go to an attorney after you 
realize that JT told you the truth, if I told you the truth, uh, and if you found out that you that it is true by doing your own research, right? So you still go to them because if there's ever a legal issue, that'll be the man or woman that defends you, right? So uh, not only do you want to fact check what JT says and verify it for yourself, I also want the person that's going to defend me if I ever need them to, to be on the same page. Like, hey, I agree this to be true. Do you agree this to be true based off of your understanding of the law? Yes, I do. And then, okay, if there's ever an issue and we got to go to war, now I got somebody that's like, okay, we on the same page. We planned this out months ago, years ago. That's why uh, I've been keeping up with my operating agreement and updating it. Uh, I have bylaws. I've been keeping minutes. I haven't commingled the funds, right? I haven't undercapitalized my business and done all of these other things uh, because I've been running a, a legitimate business that's separate and apart from me as an individual person. So I'm not worried about a lawsuit and things of that nature, right? There are certain people that, you know, a lawsuit is not a big deal. I mean, if anything... It's going to cost you, the person that's suing them, um, money uh, if they're properly prepared because they're going to try to go back after you for the court calls, the time, you know, all of the stuff that they can have written out nice and pretty based off of how good their attorney is. So if anything, you'll go sue them and end up losing money instead of making money, right? Peace and blessings, JT. Appreciate that, man. Speaking of e-commerce, what you think about drop shipping? Yeah, yeah. Uh, being the best was a drop shipping business, right? So being the best, being this business uh, right here with the shirts uh, where I did uh, merchandising for the Big Daddy Canes, uh, the Kid and Plays of the World, the Salt and Peppers of the World, which is why you see them behind me, uh, the, the autograph stuff that I uh, they were able to do for me during that period of time. So um, I, I do plan on talking more about drop shipping uh, as it relates to the topic of this video when it comes to uh, having an LLC, absolutely. Protecting your asset, absolutely. So uh, being the best. Had its own LLC before it was dissolved. Um, it had its own bank account. Everything was separate. Had its own website, and uh, I treated it like a, a business, right? Uh, absolutely. Now I will tell you that uh, I'm not a perfect person, so it was my first drop shipping business. So early on, did I make some mistakes because I didn't know what commingling of the funds was? I didn't know what undercapitalizing a company meant yes like we all made mistakes which is why i'm making this content for you guys now to hopefully uh you guys will proactively know and again this is not trying to scare you from starting a business and saying somebody's gonna sue you and take all of your stuff uh if anything i want you to keep this in the back of your mind do some more research and uh set up your own bulletproof plan that's what i like to call it that's what i'm working on now uh well, like I said, uh, I already I set up a, a new business um, recently, like as of the end of last week and earlier today. And uh, we're going to go set up the business bank account and everything else for it. So it's just part of you being a wise entrepreneur, whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur that wants to start part time or full time or if you're already an entrepreneur, but you just never thought about asset protection. And realistically, it's very easy to do that. You'll get caught up in. I just need to make sales. I need to make payroll. I need to keep uh, keep up with the inventory. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into business uh, depending on the nature of your business. So it's easy to get caught up on the day to day grind. We need to make money. Uh, I need to expand the business and grow. And uh, lots of times, maybe asset protection is like an afterthought. Right. So it's like, OK, yeah, I got an LLC. But if you don't know that, OK, if somebody really wanted to and they had a little bit of knowledge of the game or not even them, if they had enough knowledge to say, I felt like I was done wrong and I'm going to just find an attorney, a good attorney would know all of this. So maybe not the person that wants to go after you or you know about all of this, but they just were mad enough to go to an attorney and, a, and an attorney says, OK, I think you have a legitimate case. Uh, we're going to do this, right? So uh, again, I still believe that entrepreneurship is the way to go, uh, whether you're going to become a full-time entrepreneur or do it as an additional income stream for yourself. I'm really big on multiple streams of income, but 
I wanted to do this video to kind of switch it up and say, okay, we talking about how to make money, but let's talk about how do you keep as much money as possible? Because you work hard for your money, right? You got responsibilities you need to take care of, and you got to prepare the future generations that come after you as well. Whether you have kids or don't have kids, and you just want your cousins or whoever, nieces and nephews, uh, to not have to start from zero and to just keep it moving forward uh, from the foundation that you laying right now. Right. Uh, shout out to Atlanta in the building. I see you, North Carolina. What's up, Don Lucci? Right. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, your daddy, eleven seventeen, says S core. Um, so yeah, definitely. I, I tell you, um, up until this point, all of my business have been LLCs, but uh, I'm really going to dive deep into S cores and um, corporations, and, and it really just depends. On what you're trying to accomplish, like also trust as well, uh, land trust, family trust, stuff like that. Um, it really just depends on your business. So there is no you got to do it this way to be successful, right? But you do need to have a plan, and in order to be a well-rounded entrepreneur, yeah, you got a plan to make money, but let's also have a plan to keep as much money as possible. So what can we do uh, to try to keep as much money as possible? Right. Why would people try to take a business for the money or the assets that your business has that they want? Right. So um, and uh, let's just talk about the state of South Carolina. Like, right? Because you guys know uh, I did business up and down the East Coast, but now I'm, I live in North Carolina, but uh, I'm, I'm going to do business in North Carolina, South Carolina and uh, other places in the future. But right now. So in South Carolina. Right. If I do a single member LLC, meaning that it's just me, just a flow through entity and um, I have a debtor or I owe somebody some money. I don't want to pay that money. Uh, they come in uh, after me with a charging order and, uh, you know, it goes through the whole process. I'm going to oversimplify it for the sake of this example. And they foreclose on me. Right. If they foreclose on me and the state of South Carolina now, it may be different in your state, which is why I mentioned uh, some people choose to set up Nevada companies, Wyoming, Delaware, things of that nature. But in South Carolina, as a single member uh, entity, when they foreclose on you, they can really take your position as that single member uh, owner or member in that LLC. Right. So now whatever you had, they essentially have. Right. So if it was vehicles, if it was real estate, if it was bank accounts. Right. Now you run the risk of that. Now, there are contingencies that you can do to avoid all of that from happening. But best case scenario, you start setting up your asset protection plan proactively. So this is just as important as anything else you do when you start your business. So I said it before. I'm going to say it again. Best time to prepare for war is during times of peace. Right. So I don't anticipate getting sued. I hope I never get sued. I hope you never, ever get sued. Right. I also hope you do legitimate business with people at all times so they never have a reason to even think about suing you. Right. But if there ever is a situation. Right. I, I hope that your assets are protected uh, so that you don't lose everything you work so hard to get. All right. Great topic. Also, I just changed. The principal location for my LLC to where I primarily do business to further protect my personal address from my business dealings. Absolutely. That's a good point, BK from the Rockies. So a uh, lot of people uh, use their um their their home address because when you get in the articles, it's certain uh, certain parts of it. They won't let you use a P.O. box for. Right. So you got to have a physical address somewhere. Right. Um, even when it comes down to the registered agent. Right. The registered agent, you might can't use a P.O. box. They might want to have a, a physical address for that person. So now I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with starting a home based business. Right. And then later on, you could change that address to wherever you want to change it to. But it, it is important that uh, knowing that that stuff does become public record. Right. So if somebody really wanted to, um, they, they could find out, you know, OK, who owns this? What is the address? of said property right like so the good thing about uh how i'm doing real estate now and again it's not saying that this is the best way and this is the way that i'm going to do it for forever but right now uh in the position that i'm in i can buy real estate in my business name and i've had no trouble yet 
uh, where I can use the P.O. box that I established for the business as the address. So if you ever were just driving for dollars or for whatever reason, you just wanted to know who owned this property. So you get the address and you go downtown or you get the address and you go to your local GIS website and type it in. Right. It's going to give you a business name. It's going to give you a P.O. box. It's not going to give you my name and my home address where I sleep at at night. Right. So that, that is a good point. Right. Can you talk about insurance? Yes. Depending on the nature of your business, you should have liability insurance. Right. You can get liability insurance in your business name as well. I don't know exactly like uh, what specifically you want me to talk about when it comes to insurance, but definitely. Right. Your business should have liability insurance uh, like with the courier service. Of course, I made a whole video talking about it, and nobody's going to give you a contract without having insurance anyway. So, yeah, if your business is a business where it makes sense to have liability insurance, off the top of my head, I can't really think of one that would not need insurance. But, again, I'm saying it that way in case you do have a business that, that it doesn't make sense to have liability insurance. But um, if you need it, definitely get it. Get it in the business name. So, all my vehicles that I'm going to use for my business are in my business name. The real estate that I'm buying is going to be in the business name of that real estate, right? So if somebody wants to know for public record, right, hey, it's owned by this business. This business is at this P.O. box, right? Now, in the future, maybe I go to a state and they don't allow that. Then, hey, we'll develop a plan of attack for that anyway. You guys know that I do want to invest in a commercial property this year anyway, and, uh, and go forward with multifamily commercial properties and expand beyond single family homes. So definitely um, level up. Thank, thank you for the information. No problem. Right. Do you think it's a good idea to, prop, to buy property out of state? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. I think that um, you still have to understand how asset protection works. If you are going to buy property in another state, right? And, I, and I'm not, I'm still learning this, so I'm not going to try to explain it and make you think I know everything about it, right? So I live in North Carolina. I got family in North Carolina and South Carolina. Well, I got family everywhere, but uh, so for me, I'm in close proximity to all of the property that I have interest in or that I own, right? So for me, uh, I'm still learning real estate and I'm documenting the journey with you guys that are interested in learning as well to let you know anybody can do it, which I'm a firm believer in. But uh, I believe that once I learn it here, I'm going to learn it locally just because it's more convenient to me. But uh, I want to look into buying property in Florida, Georgia, Texas, outside of uh, the continental United States. Maybe check out Puerto Rico, Guam, a good Marine Corps buddy of mine is from Guam. And uh, I'm not sure if he went back home or not, but he was talking about going back to Guam, uh, other countries, right? The Caribbean, South America. So um, I, I do plan on having a variety of real estate in different areas. Uh, the only reason I'm buying it locally now is because uh, I, I'm learning a lot. So if I wanted to start off buying property in Atlanta, right, then it'll be hard for me to be hands on because I don't live in Atlanta. So I do think that buying property elsewhere is uh, is an advantage. Um, but I would recommend if you're new to it, like I am, uh, I'm finding that it is being a great teacher for me to start locally and, and then learn the game before I immediately try to buy property from super far away. Unless you have somebody there that can that you can trust and that knows the game or if you have a mentor that's going to teach you how to do it right so all of those variables will impact it right um thank you is an understatement jt much love from south texas no problem right um what insurance company can you recommend i always tell people when it comes to insurance start off with whoever you're insured with now because if you've been insured with the same company for like 20 years or something Right. Maybe they'll give you a better rate than if you go to a brand new insurance company that you don't have no history with. Right. So when I need insurance, like uh, when I needed property insurance for the, the property that we're fixing up, because uh, I want to have insurance on it the whole time in case something happens. I went to the same company that I had auto insurance with. So I always tell you to start off with whatever company you're with 
And then, of course, there's a whole laundry list of companies you can go. I personally like to get at least five quotes or five estimates before I, I go to any one of them. So if USAA doesn't give me the best price, I'll go to Progressive, Geico, State Farm, you know, on and on. And uh, just research different ones for the nature of insurance that I want and go with who's going to give me the, the best rate for the coverage that I want. So not necessarily the lowest price because I want to be adequately covered, but who's going to give me the best rate for the kind of coverage that I want uh, to make me sleep well at night, right? Uh, cool, cool. Sean Sumter says, think of all businesses as building a house, right? So appreciate all 66 people that caught this video. I know this is not my most exciting video. We're not talking about how to make a ton of money or anything like that, but this is if not just as valuable, it's more valuable than talking about that. Because if you know how to make money and don't know how to keep money, then unfortunately, we all are going to get older, you know, Lord willing, if you don't uh, depart prematurely. But you're going to get to a point where maybe physically or mentally, you can't keep up the same level of hustle that you can keep up right now. I don't care how good of a shape you in, right, when you get 90 you're not going to be able to do what you could do at 20, right? So by understanding asset protection early on and doing stuff to protect your assets, that's going to help you have longevity. And once you get older and you can't do everything, that that's all the hustling that I'm referring to, to pull all this money in. You already develop systems in place to keep that money coming in and increasing, and you have asset protection. So every time the money comes in, it's not like a cup with no bottom in it. It's coming straight through and falling out as fast as you could pour it in, right? So there you have it, you guys. Until next time, to all my hustlers, stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone. I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to